Hello everyone, I'm welcome to the Science Hub on Michelle Tito, Michelle Jordan, and Tiffany McKenna. Today we'll be taking you on anaerobic respiration. As you all know, anaerobic respiration, this is a process whereby food substances are broken down without using oxygen. The first place, they take place in the cytoplasm. We have glucose. Glu glucose is broken down, but it's not completely broken down. It has its last, its last products. We have the last products of glucose in animals and in plants. In animals, it is the lactic acid, while in plants, it is the alcohol. We also, we also have some anaerobic, anaerobic organisms that suffocate in the presence of oxygen. These anaerobic organisms that suffocate in the presence of oxygen are known as obligate anaerobics. We also have some organisms that uh, we have organisms that take place in anaerobic respiration. These organisms are known as anaerobes. There are some of the organisms that get suffocated in the presence of oxygen. These organisms, we call them obligate organisms, anaerobes. We have some of the we have some of the anaerobes that both take place aerobically and anaerobically. The ones which take place both anaerobically and aerobically are known as fluctuative anaerobes. Now I leave it up to my colleague Michelle Gavoni to take you on the equations of re anaerobic respiration. Okay, so in plants we have glucose which is broken down to energy plus carbon four oxide and water, and in animals we have glucose which is broken down to lactic acid and energy. Okay. That is in animals. And in plants we have glucose, which is broken down to lactic acid plus energy. I'll now pass it on to Tiffany to explain the examples of anaerobic respiration. Okay, here is whereby we have a short distance runner or diver holds their breath while running or diving. This, um, there we then have oxygen, lactic acid is produced, whereby the lactic acid causes some burning effects around the joints. I'll then pass it on to Michelle Gathoni, my colleague, <coughs> to explain the practical activity to investigate the gas produced during fermentation. Okay, the first step is put hot water in a beaker 40 degrees Celsius. We have hot water, we we'll measure 20, okay. centi 20 centimeters. And then measure using a thermometer 40 degrees Celsius. The third step is add to spatula of glucose and stir. This is the glucose. We then put two spatulas of glucose. Then stop. The fourth step is pour the mixture in a boiling tube. Then we'll pour it into a boiling tube.
The next step is add a spatula of yeast. As you can all see, this is dry yeast. So we'll add a spatula of dry yeast. Then put some oil in the beaker. This is our oil, so we're going to put a bit of it in the beaker. Then cover with a stopper and connect with a delivery tube. This is a stopper and these are the delivery tubes, so you're going to fix it over here. Then connect the delivery tube to another boiling tube containing the calcium hydroxide. This is our calcium hydroxide solution, so we're going to put it in. The last step is you leave the setup for one hour. I'll then leave it to Tetu to explain observation and explanation. We're going to explain the observation and we'll explain the experiment. Uh, my colleague Tiffany will take it from there. Okay, after some few minutes, this is the bottle, the boiling tube that contains calcium hydroxide. So we're being told that in the calcium in the boiling tube that contains calcium hydroxide, it will form a white precipitate. Then, um, whereby we have the boiling tube that contains the yeast and some oil and glucose. In the boiling tube that we have glucose, some yeast and oil, thereby we'll have um, it will start it will start having a smell like alcohol then michelle tetu my colleague will take you on to the next observation and explanation as we've seen the yeast that is inside this beaker will be heated and it will have a strong smell that is the alcohol smell if you smell this there will be a very strong smell that is the alcohol and then the next point the water was fast the water that was fast in the boiling tube will be expelled uh, in form of oxygen to prevent the aerobic respiration from taking place so the water that was here it will be expelled in form of oxygen and it will go through this place to prevent respiration from taking place so uh, the yeast, because this yeast, it's a living thing, it will die, it will be killed, or the enzyme which is inside there will get saturated. Uh, get saturated, that's why we had to cool the water first. And then the gas that will be produced will form a uh, moist. This moist will pass from here and go through the delivery tube into the calcium hydroxide solution. When it goes into the calcium hydroxide solution, it will turn this solution from lime water to become a white precipitate. We have now come to the end of our discussion today here on Science Hub. I have been Tiffany McKenna, Michelle Tesu, Michelle Gadoni. Keep it Elimu TV where we watch and, and learn. learn.